Arise, Queens. This is the All Queens Army, where women are provided with the tools you need to overcome your fears, face your flaws, and experience breakthroughs as you develop self-esteem so strong you emanate royalty. Now, for your host and commander of the All Queens Army, Breezy Time. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the All Queens Army Podcast. This is your girl, your host, Breezy Time. I am here with another dope episode for the Queens. Yes, honey. I am so freaking pumped today, Queens. I hope that you are super pumped. It is a Monday, another badass motivational Monday at that, and I'm super duper pumped. Oh my goodness, Queens. Let me tell you why I'm so excited, and I hope that if you're not excited and you're not pumped up today, that just the sound of my voice and hopefully my energy will excite the shit out of you. Let me tell you why I'm excited. Today is the finale episode for season two and I'm super stoked. Not because season two is over and I won't be talking to you queens on the podcast for another couple weeks until I drop season three. Not because of that. I'm super stoked because this is 40 episodes that I have committed to, that I have recorded, that I have uploaded to this All Queens Army platform and I am so freaking excited and proud of myself. So giving myself a little bit of a hand clap. Yes, ma'am, because I told you in the last episode that it is very important to acknowledge the good shit that you do. Don't always just acknowledge the things that you need to work on, but acknowledge the good shit, queens, because we put out so much good in this world. We do so much in this world that needs to be acknowledged. So the most important thing is for you to acknowledge yourself first, and I'm acknowledging myself on top of that. Here's another thing, and I hope that this motivates some of you queens as well. You guys remember that every After episode 34, which I dropped in August of 2019, I did not follow through with another episode until a couple of weeks ago. So I quote unquote, I'm using finger quotes, fell off the bandwagon, even though that's not really kind of sort of what it was. You can listen to episode 35 to get the deets on that. But the fact that I started something and drifted off and then came back and closed it out, baby, yes. Oh, honey, let me tell you, it feels so good. So I hope that that motivates some of you queens out there, if there's something that you started, something that you didn't finish, something that you want to finish, something that you didn't close out on, something that you dropped the ball on, something that you got off the bandwagon on, just get back on that damn thing, honey, and ride it and close it out. And don't let anybody tell you, oh my God, she started something and didn't finish. Baby, finish it, okay? And don't feel bad about the break in between. So now that I got that off my chest, I just wanted to pat myself on the back a little bit because I'm pumped about that, y'all. Every success success doesn't have to look beautiful, honey, but two seasons in, I feel real damn successful about that. So before we get started with today's topic, which is going to be a banger, it is going to be a dope ass episode and hopefully one that really, really helps you guys understand how to do something really important. I'm going to tell you about that in a second. However, before I jump into that, I want to ask you queens, as always, if you have not subscribed to the All Queens Army podcast, go to allqueensarmy.com, click on the subscribe link. We are on a couple of different platforms so you can choose whichever one is your favorite we're on apple Podcasts, google play soundcloud spotify youtube and itunes you can use any of those to subscribe the links are all on the website so please do so okay i really appreciate it thank you so 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 much with that being said i'm gonna jump into what we're going to be talking about today what am i going to motivate you about well i'm gonna do two things i'm gonna motivate you today because i always motivate you because guess what today is hashtag motivation monday okay so i always always want to motivate the shit out of you. All right. (laughs) So I'm going to do some motivating, but I'm actually going to be sharing with you queens how to do something that a lot of people have been talking about. It's a huge buzzword nowadays where people are talking about quote unquote manifesting. I'm going to be talking to people who are tired of not being where they want to be in life. If that's you, which it may be because you saw the title of this episode and you clicked on it and here you are listening. If you're not where you want to be, 
in life today, this is the episode for you. I want you to know, Queens, that in teaching people how to manifest, 30 minutes on this episode is not quite enough because it goes a little deeper than what I'm able to do today. I'll explain that a little bit more and explain how we're going to handle that piece of it, okay? Let's go ahead and jump in and talk about you, Queens, being tired of not being where you want to be in life. When is it going to come? So what I'm going to do is talk to you about being in the gap. The gap is the space in between you deciding that you want something and it manifesting and coming to fruition in your life. Example, you deciding I want to get married and you say that or you share it with someone or somehow you put it in the universe and you've made that decision that that's what you want. The gap is from that moment that you decided and that you put it in the universe to the moment that it actually happens. That space in between, that waiting period, that's called the gap. Why is the gap an important part of this conversation? Because during that time that you're in between making the goal or hoping or praying for something, at that moment, up through the moment that you get the thing, there's a state of mind that you have to achieve during that time. And the state of mind that you have to achieve during that time is a state of contentment. Not necessarily happiness, but a state of gratitude and contentment. And the reason that you have to stay in a state of gratitude and contentment, you cannot get to what you're hoping for, what you're praying for. It will not come to you if you're in a negative state of mind. Diddy had this quote that said, scared energy scares the money away. Now you can apply that to anything, not just money, but scared energy pushes anything that you want away. You can even interchange the word scared and put any negative emotion in there, any negative feeling in there, you can interchange with scared. So keeping that in mind, let me explain to you how to manifest the things and the circumstances that you want. I already explained to you what the gap was. The gap is the time in between you deciding and determining what you want and you actually getting what you want. Okay. How do you manifest the thing that you're asking for, the thing that you want. Well, here's how. I'm going to give you some tips. Manifesting is a process that happens. It takes a little bit of time. What I promise to do during the time that I have between season two and season three, I'm going to create a tutorial or a course of some kind that really does go into true depth of how to manifest what you want. So this episode is going to give you an introduction and a high level summary. And then over the course of the next couple of weeks, I will be developing a course for you guys that I'm gonna put on the website to go into it a lot deeper because it is really, really important at this stage of our lives, Queens, that we know how to manifest, okay? Here we go. Let me get into the high-level summary of how to manifest what you want. First things first, decide and figure out what it is that you want. Most of you have already done that. A sub-bullet of that is determine why you want what you want. Like really go into yourself. If you listened to the last episode where I described having moments of time during the day where you can just focus on your own innermost feelings, that's what you need to do here. You need to take some time to really think about what it is that you're saying you want and understanding why it is that you want it. Really get to the core of, hey, why do I even want that? It's almost like peeling back the layers of an onion. You're trying to get to the core need that you're trying to fulfill. I'm not saying that what you're saying you want isn't valid or you're going to discover that you don't really want it. You're going to have second thoughts. I'm not saying that. I just want you to really get to a point where you know and you can identify why it is that you want what you're saying you want. So I want you guys to do that. Not everyone knows how to go that deep into themselves and find the true unadulterated reasons for certain things. So I will be helping you queens with that in the tutorial, okay? Moving forward. So here's the next thing that you're gonna want to do after you decide what you want and then decide and determine exactly why you want it. Here's the next thing. I want you queens to think about how you feel about the reason that you don't have what you want. Think about that. Think about how do you feel about why you don't have it? Do you feel frustrated? Do you feel angry? Do you feel anxious? Do you feel overwhelmed? Do you feel mad at the world? The reason that you need to understand how you feel about not having what you want is because you have to remove all negative feelings about why you're not there yet. You have to remove them. You cannot have any negative talk going on in your mind, in your head, or even around you friends, family members, none of those people can be speaking negatively around you. Because remember, negativity scares what you want away. You have to manifest in a good energy pool. So you have to identify what is that pool of energy around you. And the most important energy is your own. 
So that's why you have to identify how it is that you're feeling because whatever you're feeling is creating energy. So if you're feeling negative about why you don't have what you want, you're creating negativity around not having what you want. And all that's going to do is continue to manifest the quote, not having what you want. Okay. You have to try to identify how you feel and then remove any negative feelings or thoughts around that. You have to remove them. You have to get rid of them. You have to identify with why you feel that way so you can get it out of there. No more negative talk. No more people around you who are going to talk negatively about it. This is where you start to realize who you can talk to about certain things and who you can't talk to about certain things and what you share and what you keep to yourself. And you have to start putting distance between you and some of the people who bring negative energy around you while you're in a place of manifesting. I'm not saying you have to cut people off, but you have to know how close and how far away they need to be during your period of manifestation. I will go into more of this in depth during the tutorial and be able to tell you exactly how to do that, okay? Because I know what happens a lot of times. There's so much content out here for you to learn what you need to do and understand it, but there's very little information that really goes into the nitty gritty of exactly what do I do. Now, here's the next thing. Ensure that all of your thoughts, beliefs, and feelings are positive, happy, and hopeful. This is surrounding the thing that you want. All of your energy has to be positive, happy, hopeful, and in there, you also need to add gratitude. A very, very, very good thing to do while you are in a place when you're trying to manifest something that you want is to start a gratitude journal and just couple times a week, writing your gratitude journal, all of the things that you're thankful for, because you have to understand the law of attraction is at work here. So if you are happy and grateful, whatever it is that you feel, you get more of, you attract more of that. You attract more of what you feel. You attract more of where your state of mind is. You attract more of your thoughts. You attract more of your behaviors. So if you change your behavior and you change your thoughts to a place of being grateful, of being happy, of being positive, of being hopeful, and you write a gratitude journal, then what you'll do is you'll start to manifest more of those things in your life, more things that make you happy, more things that make you hopeful, more things to be happy about. So you want to make sure that you are changing your thoughts and ensure all of your thoughts, all of your beliefs, all of your feelings are positive, happy, and hopeful, expressing gratitude, removing people from your life who are negative, and engaging more people into your life who are actually positive. So you want to start replacing negative things negative thoughts, negative people with positive things, positive thoughts, and positive people. Here's the next thing. Write down what it is that you want. You can also make a vision board. A lot of people make vision boards. Vision boards are fine. Put it somewhere that you're going to see it every day. And it doesn't have to be a big, big old, you know, vision board. If your goal is to have a baby, it could literally be just a picture on a piece of notebook paper of a baby and a lady or something like that. I write my goals down and I actually put them on the wall over my toilet. I know that's crazy. (laughs) to put it over the toilet, but that's somewhere that I go every single day. And when I walk up to the toilet, I see it. And of course, then I have to turn around and sit down and do my business. But you know, it's like you want to put that, that picture or your vision board somewhere that you're going to look at it every single day. Another idea is to make it your screensaver on your phone. So like write it out on a picture app or something like that, and then put it on your phone because that's something that you look at every day. The other thing in that same category is start to plan for the arrival of it. In other words, start doing things as if you already have the thing that you want. I use this in the example on one of the last episodes where I said, with the law of attraction, let's just say you want a baby. You're about to go buy a house. Make sure you buy a house that has a space for the baby, a space for the nursery, a space for a child's bedroom. Start doing things as if the baby is there. Start making your schedule at work and your daily schedule and what you do as if you're taking care of a child already. And I know it might sound a little weird and a little crazy, but you have to start planning your life as if it's already come. If you start to do that and you start doing things as if that thing has already come, it's already manifested, you'll start to behave like it's already there. 
you'll start feeling the feelings of it already being there. And that's all a part of manifesting. Okay, the last two are a little tough. They were tough for me. <laughs> How about I clarify that? Here's the next one is you have to let it go. You queens ever heard the term of let go and let God? Well, that's what this means. It's almost like when people tell you, hey, pray and then let it go. And that's what you have to do. You have to put out in the universe what it is that you want. And how do you put it out there? Like I said, you write it down, you create a vision board, you, you know, you say it out loud, something like that. That's actually how you start the process of manifestation is just by saying, this is what I want. So once you do that, and then you start to incorporate all the previous things I just told you, then you kind of have to let it go. Let it go means don't harp over it every single day. Don't worry about it. Don't think about it. Don't look at it and say, oh man, it's been two weeks and nothing's happened yet. You have to let it go. Let it go is all about trust. It's about belief. It's about faith. And most importantly, it's about patience. So once you get to the point where you've identified it, you've claimed it, you started to incorporate it in your life, you've removed all of the negative thoughts about it, you feel happy thoughts and you smile when you think about it, you started behaving as if it's already happened, then you just mentally have to let it go. Trust that the universe or God, whatever you believe in, is going to bring it. Trust that in due timing, it will come. Start really, really, really having faith and then have patience, okay? Just be patient. Everything doesn't happen overnight. Manifestations don't come overnight. It doesn't happen in a day. It takes time. So remember that time, that patience is the gap. And that's why I started with explaining what the gap is and why it's so important that you understand the gap. The gap is a place where you have to learn how to be content. So that's what I just explained to you. You have to learn how to find contentment in knowing that it's coming. Find contentment in your life no matter what it looks like right now. Again, I'll use the example of a woman who wants a kid and that's what she's trying to manifest. You have to learn how to be happy where you are. Don't be sad and miserable and bitter every time you see a mom and her kid and they look so happy and you start feeling sorry for yourself. Change that thought habit and start to think in those moments, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. Oh, I'm so happy for her. This is such a beautiful thing. And I'm telling you, queens, once you find that contentment in the gap, that's patience. That's realizing that God, the universe, whatever you believe in, is working for you in that moment. Being happy, being able to smile without it, enjoying that moment. I remember the gap for me because I wanted to be married. So I was in a gap for a long goddamn time, y'all. Like I was in the gap for a, a minute, okay? It took me till 35 to get married for the first time. And so in the beginning of the gap, I was doing everything wrong. I was miserable. I was frustrated. I was kind of hating on other people's happiness. I couldn't really be happy for other people. I saw other people happy and it was like, I'm happy for them, but inside I'm kind of turning my nose up like mm, whatever you know that those were my feelings and then it got to a point where I started learning how to manifest and I realized that I really had to change that energy you know I couldn't feel those feelings anymore and so I started to like when I would see other couples and I would see them happy or when I would watch movies about love and the happy ending and stuff like that it would bring tears to my eyes I started to feel like oh my gosh this is so beautiful and I actually started to feel like I could feel their love like I was experiencing their love with them whether it was on tv or in real life and I legitimately was happy for people like I wanted to pick them up and spin them around like oh my gosh this is so beautiful I'm so happy for you guys and it was really genuine I stopped feeling crazy when I was going to family events and everybody was with their boo and I was by myself just me and my son at first I used to be in those situations and I would feel like dag I'm like the third leg I'm the only person with no spouse and I used to feel sad well after I started changing my mindset about it and I learned how to be content in the gap I was just happy to be around people who had somebody to love I was happy and I was content and I was fine and I didn't even think about the fact that I didn't have someone on my arm I was just thinking about the fact that oh my gosh my sister next to me is so happy this is so beautiful and I just wanted to hug her and hug her husband and be happy with them and I was so happy for my brother and I was so happy for my mom because they were happy and they were in love and they were in relationships and here I am amongst these people in love I'm sitting with the people that have what I want I feel fucking blessed I'm happy that's how I started to feel and that's called learning how to be content in the gap it's just changing your perspective you have to change your perspective and learn how to trust and learn how to have faith and learn to believe that your time is here and learn to have patience. And that's what being in the gap is all about. And I tell you, I promise you, Queens, you will manifest exactly what it is that you want. It will come. Now, this does take patience, obviously, and it does take practice. The reason I said it's not that easy is because for me, it took me years to kind of figure out what it was that I wasn't doing 
that was preventing me from manifesting what I wanted. I thought I was doing all the right stuff, but the stuff that I was doing to manifest what I wanted was superficial. It was stuff on the surface. It was stuff on the outside. And what I needed to do was work on stuff on the inside, work on me on the inside, work on changing my mindset, work on changing my attitude, work on changing my perspective, work on me being patient because I was super duper impatient type of person. And those are the things that I had to work on within myself. And I'm telling you, it made such a huge difference for me. There's so many people that I know, including some of my really close friends who I've watched them manifest things, whether they realized that they were doing it or not, they did it and they did it successfully. And so I just wanted to share that with you, Queens. And I really hope that you understand what I'm saying. This may be one of those episodes you might have to listen to a second time just to kind of really embrace what it is that I'm saying and maybe take your time and take some notes. And again, I promise, promise, promise you, Queens, I am going to bring to you a how to manifest tutorial that will go way more into detail about each one of the things that I shared that you should try to do and that worked for me. And I'm going to tell you exactly what it is that I did because it does take more than just saying you're going to do it. It really does take effort. It really, really takes effort. It really takes some focused effort for you to decide that this is what you want to do. Remember, nothing that you want and nothing worth having is going to come easy. So you really have to decide that you want it and you really have to make a commitment to it. So with that being said, Queens, this is the close of season two. I am so, so honored, so, so grateful, so, so happy to have you Queens in my life, to have you as friends, to have you as people who think enough of me to tune in every week and hear what little old breezy time has to say. I really love you queens and I wish nothing but the best for you. I really am proud of each and every one of you. I think that you are so beautiful, so strong, so lovely, and so deserving of everything it is that you want in life. So until season three, I will talk to you soon. I love you queens so much. I promise to drop you that tutorial. That's my word. I never get give my word and not come through. I promise you queens. I love you so, so, so much. Please enjoy the time and the gap (laughs) between season two and season three. And this is a great time to catch up on season one. If you're a newbie around here or to go back and listen to some old episodes. Okay. I love you queens so much. Have a wonderful, wonderful Monday. And I will be talking to you soon. Thanks. Bye. Thank you for listening to the All Queens Army podcast. If you want to connect with Breezy Time and the All Queens Army, be sure to follow them on IG and Facebook at All Queens Army or head over and check out the All Queens Army YouTube channel. Until next time.